Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I am Jay. I am part of the Greenplum product management team, and I am responsible for Greenplum on Cloud Marketplaces offering. So I am quite sure that most of you are already aware of Greenplum on Cloud. But for those of you who are not aware of Greenplum on Cloud, please refer the blog that I have mentioned in the description below. In case if you wish to try out the solution, please refer the other link that I have mentioned in the description. So in this video, we quickly wanted to highlight a couple of features which were released as a part of 6.7.0 version of Greenplum on AWS, and also we wanted to highlight a couple of best practices which we think will be really beneficial for our customers. So without any further ado, let's jump into the demo. So as a part of the 6.7.0 version of Greenplum on AWS, we have started to support a new instance type named R5B. According to Amazon, these instances provide 3x EBS performance compared to the same sized R5 instances. So we currently support 2XL, 4XL, and 8XL instance sizes for segment hosts. So after deploying Greenplum using R5B.4XL instances, we did a GP checkoff test and we were able to achieve approximately 2x the read write performance compared to R5.4XL instances. And one more point to note is that R5B is a little bit costlier, approximately around 20% costlier than R5 instances. However, the price performance that is offered by R5B instances is much better than R5 instances. Also, the R5B instances are not available in all the regions. At the time of creating this video, the R5B instances were available only in these regions. So now let us quickly see how to deploy a Greenplum cluster with R5B.4XL. So this is the landing page of the AWS Marketplace. So let us search for Greenplum here. So as you could see, there are two listings mentioned over here. One is the BYOL listing and the other is the hourly listing. So the hourly listing or pay as you go is basically meant for customers who want to deploy Greenplum cluster only for a shorter period, typically for POCs. So those customers could make use of this PG model, which is mentioned here as an hourly listing. Um, other customers who have long-term plans could utilize this BYOL listing after procuring a license of Greenplum from VMware. So for the purpose of this demo, let me choose the BYL listing. So it says in this blue box that I already have the entitlement for this product. And on this page, you can find all the details about this offering. We also have the release notes mentioned over here. And you could refer this link to learn more about Greenplum on AWS and also for updates about the latest version of Greenplum on AWS. So now let's click on continue to subscribe. So after you have read the terms and conditions, click on continue to configuration. Here, uh, you can choose to deploy the Greenplum cluster in an existing VPC or in a new VPC. So let me choose new VPC cluster in this case and leave the region as US East North, North Virginia and the software version as 6.7.0, which is the latest version of uh, you know, Greenplum on AWS currently and click on continue to launch. So to deploy this Greenplum cluster, we are making use of the CloudFormation template. So let me choose Launch CloudFormation option from this dropdown and click on Launch. So another tab will open point into the Create Stack page. The template that we use is present in an S3 bucket and that link is actually mentioned over here. So now let's click on Next. So on this page, you can specify the stack details. So let's just enter the stack name, uh, Greenplum demo. And then you have to choose the availability zone and you also have to specify the key pair. So this key pair is actually used to access your instances instead of using a password. And in case if you want to encrypt your data disk, then you can choose this option as true. If not, you can just leave it as false. So currently we support three types of data disks, uh, SE1, ST1, and GP2. So we recommend SE1 to majority of our customers, but in case if the use case demands for continuous data loading and querying, then ST1 is something which we recommend to all our customers. And also for OLTB workloads, GP2 is a recommended data disk type. And GP2 is basically a SDD, while SC1 and ST1 are HDDs. So you can then specify the database version, the name of the database, and you can also specify the master instance type. So in this, you will be able to see that uh, the R5B instances are also listed over here. And uh, 
the master data disk size we can just leave it as is for now and under segment instances I'm going to choose the segment instance type as r5b.4x large I'm just going to leave the segment disk size as is uh, and I'm going to choose the segment instance count as 4 and click on next so in this page you can specify the stack options you can configure the stack as required so I'm going to skip this part for now I'm just going to leave it with the defaults um, so in this page you can actually review the parameters that you have chosen and then you have to acknowledge that AWS cloud formation might create IAM resources and then once everything is done all you need to do is just click on create stack and wait for your green plum uh, cluster to be deployed in less than 90 minutes So once a cluster is deployed, we could connect to that cluster from our CLI. So in case there is a new version that is released, then the application will prompt you to execute the GP release utility. So now for customers who are using the 6.7.0 version of Greenplum on AWS already and have deployed their Greenplum cluster with R5 instances but wish to migrate their segment host to R5B instances, all they have to do is execute the GP compute utility and choose from the list of supported instance types to migrate to. So let me execute GP compute help. So uh, in this case, as you could see, we currently also accept R5B.2X large, R5B.4X large, and R5B.8X large. Even vice versa is possible. That is, customers can also migrate the segment host from R5B to R5 instance types if required. Also, some of our customers have faced EBS disk failure issues. So though the reason is unknown, we predict that it might be due to the underlying hardware wear out. So in order to tackle this, we now have enabled the no fail option by default, which will allow the experts to log into the VM even in case of EBS disk failures and take the necessary action. Additionally, in order to avoid such issues in the first place, we highly recommend that our customers create a new cluster once a year and make use of GP Snap or GP Backup Restore or GP Copy to migrate the data to the new cluster from their old cluster. Though this does not guarantee that the underlying EBS disk will be new ones, this could probably reduce the chances of your EBS disk failure. Also, sometimes for debugging purposes, our customers require the ability to pause and resume the auto scaling group from the CLI. This is now possible with GP Power ASG pause and GP Power ASG resume. So let me quickly execute GP Power help. So with GP Power ASG resume, you will be able to resume auto scaling group. With GP Power ASG pause, you will be able to pause the auto scaling group. And with GP Power ASG status, you will be able to understand and know the status of your auto scaling group, whether if it is paused or whether if it is resumed. So I hope you all like this video and found it beneficial. If yes, please give a thumbs up and kindly do also share it with your friends and colleagues. Please do subscribe to this channel for more updates on Green Plum on Cloud. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.